Okay, ladies and gents, we're going to start section one for component two learning game A. But before we do, I just want to remind you that the success criteria is always um, available to you here on this in this table here, just underneath uh, where we left off in the last video. And as you can see, there's a breakdown of exactly what is required for you to get those top marks for so distinction, merit, pass, and of course, you got uh, merit two and pass two there as well. So this here by itself may, may not make much sense, but as you go through each section, you'll see how they tie in to these parts. If you look at the top here, you see you're going to be ex expected to assess data collection methods, features uh, that are used to um, to collect the information, the data, sorry, that companies may decide to use and how they affect the quality of data and subsequently the decision making process. And what we need to do is we need to do it for two different sectors, two different companies. You can draw um, detailed, uh, justified conclusions out from them also. As I said in the previous video, you're going to be given those two uh, businesses uh, to, you, to, to yourselves. And in this case, in the mark, we're going to be working with a cinema and, of course, a school. Um, below this section, you've got sources of information. I would definitely recommend you having a look at these here in your own time, especially if you are working from home. For those who want the merits and distinctions as a, as a level two, uh, very, very uh, highly recommended. All you got to do is click there and you'll see the link pops up underneath. So have a look at them you know it extra work and the time you put in working with uh, these uh, software is going to make the world of a difference to get those high marks um, especially when we're working with software that some of you may have never uh, opened or seen before let alone work with um, here you got the broke breakdown of the two different types of uh, you know files you have to use to create the dashboard ultimately um, but as I said before even looking at the spreadsheet, looking at any of the software, i.e. Excel, it's important that we understand uh, the background, the context, and of course, data and information in itself. So let's look at section one. So section one, and I want to say this before I carry on actually, I do say this a lot, anything in black, you can copy over to your real assessment, authorized assessment brief. Um, anything in red are prompts. They are what me, I am telling you as a teacher where to focus your attention and what you need to answer. Yeah, they're your prompts. So you shouldn't copy anything in red over. Um, and if you, even if you did, it, should, it wouldn't really make sense. Now, the good news is that here, because we're not talking about any companies just yet, most of what we do in these sections, and I'll tell you when it, it, when it won't be relevant, but most of what we do here at the beginning will be pretty much exactly what you need for the real thing. So get this right first time, get your feedback from your teacher, uh, improve on it, and then of course start the authorised assessment brief for this component. So let's go on. Section one, we're looking at um, characteristics of data information. I've highlighted the pages that you need to help you get those extra marks in the um, the official book from Pearson, the BTEC Award Digital Information Technology Student Book um, that I make uh, quite a lot of reference to in the earlier uh, video series for Component 1. So what I will do is I will highlight a couple, uh, couple of the main points from these pages but if you're in my class, you should have copies of this. Please have a look at them. Either print them out or look at the online version. Um, for those of you who aren't with me, um, I would highly recommend you get a copy of this book. There are online versions, uh, physical versions. If you're anything like me, you might like a physical version in front of you. Uh, and they're not really that expensive anyway. So have a look at it. Just Google uh, Pearson and type in the, the, uh, the, 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 the name of the course and you should be able to find it. So let's carry on. First few questions, you need to describe the characteristics of data, meaning that it has no meaning, that it has no structure, there's no context, and it's unprocessed. So you have to use these words in your definition. So you need to explain and describe the characteristics of data. Then you need to do the same thing for information, and no, they are not the same. Data and information are two different things, and you can see they're quite the opposite. 
Yeah, one has no meaning when the when the other one does. One has no structure when the other one does. One has no context and is unprocessed, while the other one has context and is processed. And then I want you to tell me why both of them are important, and can you can you ha have one without the other? Okay, explain that. So let's go through that very briefly. So if you look at page 72 to 73, you'll see some of the main points. You've probably heard the term data and information used a lot. But what do they mean and what is the difference between them? This is the key question as you learn about changing data into information. That's what this whole component is really about. Getting raw data and making something useful out of it. Making some sense out of it. Data is a series of numbers or letters that has no structure or context and which by itself has no meaning and has not been processed. To provide structure or meaning to data, it needs to be processed in some way. Okay, so if you look at page 72, you'll see some examples there. Please get some of your own examples. So what I want you to do here, boys and girls, is after you've done the description, you defined it, give me some, some examples of raw data data that makes no sense and usually it's in a list format okay so look at the ones on page 72 you'll see what I mean don't just copy it word for word because it needs to be your own work so what's information well information is data that's that's been processed the process uh, so the processing may involve doing several different things to data such as adding structure so if you look at figure 2.1 it shows um, above the data in a structured format yeah so you'll see there's a table there and the same data that was talked about in the data section has been put in a table format with labels at the top. Okay, this won't make sense in, unless you look at it. Okay, and hopefully if you can see it, you'll know what I mean. So the moment you put it in a table, it's already making a little bit more sense. It's being processed. Okay. Figure 2.2 shows what information is made from. So information is data and meaning with structure and context. So you get data and you try to get meaning from it. You try to get some purpose from it by applying structure and then context. By context, we have to. what I mean is what we have to do is answer this particular, a simple, or two simple questions really. Number one, why was the data collected in the first place? And number two, who collected it? You have to then look at how it was collected, who was it collected from, to understand whether it was accurately done, whether it was relevant, whether it's going to be useful. And we're going to go into those kind of things soon. Given structure and meaning to data um, has many forms. Data is often structured by splitting it into fields and records, for example in the table format. Each field has a name or title, which is usually shown in the top row of a table. Figure 2.1 shows the same data listed as the unprocessed data, but with field names added. Spreadsheets and database software is used to create and maintain structured data. Sh spreadsheets allow text and numeric data to be stored in a table format of rows and columns. Databases are more sophisticated are a more sophisticated way to create structured tables or fields and records and linked, link different tables together. This can also be done by linking data uh, in one spreadsheet to an external data source or linking different spreadsheets together within a workbook. Yeah, as I said in the previous video, if I go back here, you can see different tables here. Now some of these aren't pretty. This one looks a bit more you know, easy on the eye compared to this one, as an example. But these are all connected to this dashboard. Yeah. Instead, structure is provided by dividing the book into chapters. Sorry, let me say that again. The information in this book, for example, could not be represented that way. Instead, structures, structure is provided by dividing the book into chapters, with headings and subheadings providing further structure. So what they're basically trying to say is this. Even information, sorry, data found in books is structured. But you can't do that in a table format. A book is a book, isn't it? So you break it into chapters and topics. But it's still structure. And by doing so, you have order. And that order makes it easier for us human beings to internalize that data. And therefore, it becomes useful. And if it's becoming useful, meaning we can understand it, it's information. 
The most important characteristic of, of information is that it is meaningful. It tells you something you need to know or that would be useful to know. Historical weather data provides an example of this. Lists of rainfall and sunshine amounts for each month for a particular location by themselves are not very useful. But when planning a holiday to that location, charts showing the average sunshine hours and rainfall amounts for each month can help you plan when to go and what clothes to take with you. And if you might need an umbrella. umbrella. So, as I said, data information. Data is raw data, text, numbers, yeah, and the list can go on and on. Information is when you make use of that in data, structure it, order it, and, and make it meaningful. I hope that makes sense. That's the first section, as I said. It's a very short, short section, to be fair. Um, have a go at the activity that's on page 73 as well. That might help you. In fact, that might be a good way of actually putting an example here. Um, before I finish off, I just want to just show you an example. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new PowerPoint slide just to show you physically their difference, just in case there are some of you who don't have the book in front of you. So, um, hopefully when this loads up, I can show you the difference between the two. So, here we go. So I'm just going to use the same example that's in the book. So I'm just going to book two. So for example, one, two, two, three. Two nine two zero three. By the way, feel free to stop the video if you get it. If you don't get it, then of course this might be useful for you. Uh, one or two. I'm gonna put Liverpool. I'm just gonna do the first two, just so you can see what I mean. One four one two one seven three two four four. 10, 245.29. Now, if you had to guess between data and information, which one would you say this, this, these two rows are at the moment? Does it make sense by itself or not? Forget for a second that you see Ashford here and Liverpool there. By itself, can you tell? Can you make any meaning from this? Can take any meaning from this? Can you, can you use this by itself right now? I hope most of you will say no. So therefore, this must be data. It's raw data. It's not been structured. It's not been organized. And even though you, most of you will be able to uh, you know, guess that this is an area, a location, and maybe that's a door number, the rest of these don't make any sense, really, not by themselves. So how can we make that useful? So that at the moment is data. If I then put the same information into a table, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, yep, one, two, three, four, five, six, two down. There we go. Actually, no, I am mistaken. To make this even better, I need to put insert. There you are. That'll do. Right. So, if I copy this information now across. All of a sudden, just from the structuring of this information, it's already looking easier on the eyes. Now, I'm just going to put this in here. There we go. Let's do the next one. Sorry, my computer's slowing down for some reason. Might be because of the recording in the background. Apologies, there we go. Four, ten, and lastly, twenty-four, twenty-nine. 
so it's not selecting there you go right so by themselves again something's missing though the top the labels the field names meaning what they actually mean so this one could be what they're saying is trip id sorry and this one is destination meaning where they're going oh forgot to take the cap lock off and we have date of trip we've got miles and all of a sudden that makes more sense duration have I missed something? I feel like I missed something trip ID destination date of trip miles duration and cost oh they've missed something for some reason oh yes that's what it is they haven't missed something I mixed it up you'll see what I mean in a second so cost so basically these two together is duration that basically is three hours can you see now so those that 3.29 could mean anything right now we know that's three hours 29 minutes yeah so we can delete this And this is four hours and ten minutes. So if you make a comparison between these two now, between the two, the bottom table makes more sense. Okay? Although I still forgotten to you know, I haven't put that in there. These are uh, in between here, because then that you can see clearly we're talking about Date. So we're talking about data types here, which we'll be talking about in section two, and this is missing the you know some kind of currency, so we know that we're talking about money. So between the two, the bottom one, the bottom set of information, and I've, I said it there by you know automatically, it's it's the data, the same data at the top, put in a way that makes sense. So that's data, that's information. Hopefully that makes sense. If it does, fantastic. You know what to do in section one now. Tell me, explain, and describe using examples the difference between the two and tell me why I need both. Now that should be self-explanatory. Why do we need both? Can you have one without the other? The answer is no. You need the data first collected, don't you, to get to this point. If you didn't have this in the first place, how would you make sense of it? Right? So hopefully you'll be able to answer that question as well.